Dion. Dion. I do. I'm genuinely, I love Dion's work. I genuinely want to hear her answer that. <laughs> Dion, the critic and the artist often put at odds are two sides of the same coin. Can you talk about the relationship that theory has in your art and art has in your theory? How do you conceive of the two working together in your art? That is a beautiful question because um, it is theory and art that I'm trying to put together. <laughs> in every work, in some ways, right? Um, I am not the innocent artist yeah, who comes at ideas in the work, whether it's poetry or prose or essay, feigning that I know nothing, right? I know something and I have an opinion about something and I have a critique about something. Right? Um, how do I shape that into art? I think um, that I am trying to analyze the world as an act of being in the world. And so that requires uh, a collection of knowledges, uh, collections of analytics, uh, uh, collections of ways of being in the world. And I'm trying to put all of that together. So I think art and theory are not different. Um, I think maybe they're the same thing. Hello, Dion. My question for you relates to something I read in an interview you once gave, uh, where you said, my concern is not that the reader builds a world. And I'd be fascinated to hear you speak more about this, about where the world is for you in relation to your books, whether it's place or the ways a reader might bring in the world changes when you're writing narrative fiction compared to when you're writing poetry, and whether you even find it meaningful to use the phrase, the world. In, in my novel theory, um, I was not concerned with building a physical world for the reader, right? So I was not concerned with putting a tree outside or marking that there's a house with a street, there's a street with a house uh, or there was an ocean or any of those things. I was concerned with the interior life of the protagonist, of the first person narrator. Uh, and the first person narrator was only concerned with her interior life also, right? Or her intellectual life or her philosophical life. The other thing is, I trust the reader. That is, I do not think that I have to say, we are in this city, um, walking down this street. At least that is not the intention in this novel, to do those things. But in, in general, uh, uh, I trust the reader to walk into the novel with me. So this novel simply said to the reader, I am in this day, right? And expects the reader to understand that because there is something about, you know, the commonality with which, in which we all live that, um, that the novel and the protagonist of the novel expects the reader to understand at all levels, right? So that was my project in, in theory, uh, not to coddle the reader or to disrespect the reader. Dion, what are your thoughts about the relationship between writing and understanding? For example, do you feel the need to articulate to yourself and for yourself what you're trying to say and or do in order to write it? No, I think I begin writing from a question, from a, a conundrum that I need to understand, right? I might have 
a certain outline, but mostly it's the outline of a question. What is it to be in the world? In this way, or in this way, or in this way? And then, as I write, I discover some things myself. So, the writing for me doesn't start from what I know. It begins from what I don't know and what I'm trying to figure out. And in the novels, it's, try, it's, it's a character, a person trying to figure something out, some difficulty out about the world. And as the writer, I'm halfway there, but not quite. Or at least I tell myself, don't be so sure that you understand this. Be open to something else that might happen as you elucidate this problematic. In a sense, writing through the experience, writing through the questions, I figure out, oh, so that's how that happened. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll take it there. There is something at the end of poetry that I absolutely don't know. I cannot get beyond it. Uh, I cannot get beyond a particular line, right? And so the next book begins with that, begins at that, at that space. Then the next book begins with the problem I had with the previous book, right? The, the thing that I was not big enough and not human enough to scale in that book. Rene, what is made possible by the geography and architecture of Ravika? What do these worldings make possible for the writer, as well as the inhabitants, across your trilogy? The yellow air, the bridge, the hotel, the language, the buildings, the affects. The geography in Ravika is really um... It it's, was this emergence of thinking about uh, actually trying to imagine like a, a, a country for these people, like a landscape for them. And, and what I learned really early in the writing of these books is that the, um, the architecture or the, or the crises that happen in the architecture, that's what produces the momentum in the writing. So, uh, there's always a sense of needing to cross space and often to cross space to tend to some geographic entity or problem or possibility. But I feel that my characters learn a lot from having to encounter the buildings or having to uh, think about the, the water that is gone or think about the mountains or the winds. And, and those are all sort of affecting the direction of their day and the direction of their, their movement. Vivian, is nation a useful category for a writer? Any category that is metaphorically suggestive to you is of use to a writer. The question of how you organize um, the elements of a metaphor is what's at stake. So uh, I remember a time in my own life when uh, the social forces of life seemed utterly paramount. And I was raised in a household where class struggle was everything. So in my, the beginning of my writing life, for instance, I saw human beings up against forces they could neither understand or control that were external to them. In that sense, I would say nationhood or a sense of place in the world uh, was very acute. Now, it's interesting, I, as a young woman, uh, the daughter of working class Jewish immigrants, I never would have described myself as an American, but I would certainly have described myself as a New Yorker. New York was my country. <laughs> In other words, the, the incredible urban, the urban, urbanness of life was a very, um, had a very profound effect upon me. Um, and that went hand in hand with class struggle. <laughs> in time, um, the elements of struggle turned inward. 
and class struggle gave way to struggle with my own subconscious. Um, and that became a more, more to the point for me. But it's whatever it is that is, as I say, metaphorically suggestive, is the way to go. This question is for Dion. As someone who writes through multiple genres, namely the essay, poetry, and fiction, what do you think each of these forms of writing can learn from the other? For example, what can fiction learn from what poetry does, and so on? Would you want a form in which all these genres were enacted simultaneously? And if so, what would you use it for? Um, I think all these forms are about frequencies, right? For me, the different forms uh, inform or enact a certain frequency. And I think most of all for me, because I began as a poet, poetry informs all of these different genres in some ways, right? I wanted to do in these different genres what poetry does, <laughs> yeah? Uh, so, I, so poetry um, brings uh, more muscularity for me, at any rate, to each of these genres. So in terms of fiction, when I write fiction, I didn't want to write fiction that was uh, simply uh, schematic or um, expository. I wanted to use the work of language in fiction. And the work of language comes out of how, how the different things that poetry does, right? The triple, quadruple meanings that poetry can enact. And I wanted to figure out how to do that in prose, in fiction. So I think these are the things that they lend each other. And I think I employ them depending on the, the, the frequency of the note or the frequency of the sound that I want to make. Now, do I want them all together? Not yet. <laughs> and perhaps not, at least in my own work. I still kind of respect them as disciplines. Yeah, in some ways. I simply want to uh, see what the play among them, what the play among them might be.